So, uh, welcome to episode one of Talk Kilos to me. This is a Kansas City Barbell Coach video cast. So, we'll broadcast this on Facebook Live and we'll upload it on YouTube a little bit later. So, this is going to be essentially the three main coaches for Casey Barbell, myself and Sean, the owners. Scott just moved here to Mississippi. He's one of our coaches now. We will we'll probably buy in sometime in the future once we get more situated here. We're going to talk about things to do with training, nutrition. You know, go over some questions we got from our members and on Facebook pages, Instagram comment questions. So this will be a platform for us to expound upon these topics over time. But first we're going to go into like a step one situation. So today's main topic is the first step two. So we're going to start with Scott. We're going to go for his step one. Go ahead, Scott. All right, guys. Hey, uh... People reach out to us all the time saying, you know, how do I get in shape? How do I get lean? How do I learn how to eat? Um, and regardless of if you're, you know, a competitive athlete or just a regular Joe, the number one step that I think you're going to have to address is just becoming a little bit more aware of what you're eating and what you're putting into your body. Before you start worrying about, you know, figuring out optimal calories, figuring out your macros, figuring out, do I need to go keto? No, you probably don't. Um, the first thing you're gonna to need to do is start just paying attention to what you put in your mouth and putting on your plate. The tool I like for this, uh, there's two tools. You're gonna have some way of logging, which can be a notebook. It can be an app like My Fitness Pal. I know you, uh, you like My Macros Plus. Yes. Uh, that's another great app for this. And uh, very simply, just a little food scale. You can get them for like $10 to $12, $15 from Walmart. I've got a sharper image one that I've had for like five years that works great. Um, and just start keeping a food journal. Pay attention to what you're putting in your body. And this is what builds awareness. Uh, for example, you may completely blow your fat target for the day from eating like a little bag of Zaps chips. I remember the first time I logged some of those, I was like, holy crap, now what do I eat the rest of the day? And it was basically, I think, potatoes and chicken that day. Uh, so <laughs> having to eat nothing but potatoes and chicken the rest of that day was not worth those Zaps chips. And the other side of this, not just seeing the foods that are grossly... Uh, overblowing your calorie targets, which tend to be your more processed foods, you get to see the ones that are practically freebies. Uh, I know for me, like green vegetables at this point, I don't even log anymore. Uh, there's a lot of vegetables I don't because the fiber content and the balance of that as far as not really having any negative calorie load is there. Uh, you're going to find foods that have a ton of bulk and uh, satisfaction. Uh, for example, potatoes for the carbs that you get that keep you full and that make you feel pretty good. Um, so that's gonna be step one, is just building some awareness, keeping a journal, and uh, learning a little bit more about the consequences of what you're putting in. So uh, I've got a question for you. Uh, yep. You said you like to have the foods that you more, have more fiber, correct? Yes. Okay, that's why I make sure I heard it correctly. I was yeah. like, wait a minute, are you that wrong? Okay, awesome. Yeah, yeah I think that's great. It's kind of hard, so yes, step one for anybody who's learning how much you're actually eating. Yeah. I mean, because I know we have a tendency to mismeasure, I mean, something like peanut butter. Mm -hmm. An actual tablespoon of peanut butter is depressing. You look at that and you're like, it's a tiny bit of amount of peanut butter. That's 16 grams of fat. That's 145 calories, pretty much, 135 yeah. calories. Yeah. No, 155 calories, something like that. Whatever, my math is off, I get the idea. So that's a lot of calories per small spoon. Now, if you scoop it out and say, yeah, it looks like a food, you're probably eating 300 calories right there, maybe yeah. more. And that's the thing is, this stuff will sneak up on you. Yeah. Uh, and I, that's yeah. the big thing. Yeah, definitely. That's yeah. So in contrast, uh, say another 155 calories, what do you think would be on the other end of the spectrum compared to peanut butter? Like, what do you mean? Um, what is going to give you the most bulk? Well, oh. well, the other thing that, so what, what, how much is a teaspoon or excuse me, a tablespoon of peanut butter? It's about the size of your thumb. Right. Okay. You put that on a piece of bread, right? And it's not going to cover the bread. The serving size is two tablespoons, two thumbs of peanut butter. That's what you're supposed to be uh, putting on your bread. Does anyone do that? No. With a right. four, five. Yeah, exactly. So we miss it. I, I, well, a lot of my clients 
really forget about what they're adding to their food. And the biggest one that I found back when I was in Virginia was creamer in coffee, like flavored whatever, honey, whatever, whatever. I don't even know because I don't use it. Um, but it was 170 calories per serving, and I think that was a tablespoon per serving. I thought it was coffee. I was going to say black coffee, but no, yeah. it's uh, black coffee. always black. clear clear water. Clear water. Black coffee. Um, sorry to interrupt. No, that's good, man. That's, that's awesome. I mean, is everybody getting their idea? I mean, I think it's a great first step, you know, honestly. I think that's Thank you. the biggest first step you can possibly do with any kind of plan, whether it's training, nutrition, health, it doesn't matter. That's like, in my opinion, that's the quintessential first step, is learning what you're putting into your mouth from point one. Because if you know what you, you know how much you're putting into your mouth, you can really start to target and pinpoint what you need to correct. Yeah, because just, just to elaborate on, on what Sean was saying, you know, that serving of peanut butter that may be 155 calories, by the time you've made something as simple as a PB&J, you may be looking at seven to 900 calories worth of sandwich. And for some so of our good. smaller athletes, that could be like two thirds of your food for the day or half. And, and thinking so that it's one third yeah. of that calorically. Yeah. Right. So you yeah. Can, and you're looking at that sandwich, you have white bread, which is pretty dense in calories and carbs. You have jelly, which is tons of sugar. But you have peanut butter, which is tons of fat. And what he asked me a couple minutes earlier is what would you be on the other end? Okay, the other end are high bulk foods, like potatoes, rice, uh, vegetables, which learn how to cook them. Because you can literally make a pot of vegetables, broccoli, some pepper mixed up into it, like a touch of oil, a little bit of soy sauce, some salt, pepper, some garlic, and it'll taste amazing. And you can add some lean meat on top of that. Now, is that gonna satisfy your soul like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich will? Hell no. I mean, we all know that comfort food tastes way better than like chicken and vegetables. And I like chicken and vegetables. Yeah. But I would really kill right now to have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich in my mouth. It's so damn good. But when you're trying to track what you're eating and eating a certain amount of calories per day, the bang for your buck situation comes in handy. Yeah, yeah, nutrition density. You're going to get a lot more nutrition out of all that plate full of vegetables and that plate full of healthy meat than you are that same. So, just a little perspective. I like it. Yeah. All right, going to my step one, which ties us precisely to this, is uh, food quality. Micronutrients, fiber, bulk, quantity. You know, when you look at simple foods, they're like one macro foods that are whole foods potatoes, vegetables, chicken, for the most part. Is Unless you like really fatty chicken thighs. You know, lean beef, uh, flank steak, which is relatively lean for a steak, stuff like that. It's like you get more bang for your buck eating higher quality foods than you will eating a pack of Pop Tarts, which tastes amazing, but a pack of Pop Tarts and a couple hundred calories, you know, a lot of carbs, a lot of sugar, which sugar is fine in quantities, obviously, you're not gonna eat it all day, but it's not gonna kill you. But you're trying to have the volume of food more when you're having a satiety of food. I mean, what I mean by satiety is like not satiety index, but it makes you feel fuller. But it's that comfort of like, man, that uh, candy bar tasted amazing. But it was 440 calories for something this big. I mean, you could eat a larger meal for that. So you have to kind of weigh out the pros and cons of each of your food choices. And in my opinion, food quality makes a big difference. Not only do you eat more volume of food, you're actually getting more vitamins and minerals and more micronutrients. You know, and if people always say you should plug your holes in your diet with your vitamins, you should really eat most of your vitamins and food. You should plug your holes in minerals. I'd, I'd like to just elaborate on that a little bit too. Something I've personally noticed, I've noticed with a handful of my clients, is that when they're getting more whole foods, more nutritionally dense foods, the overall hunger tends to drop. It does. So if you're actually getting your nutrition, your body will not continue to constantly tell you, hey, you've got to eat, you've got to eat, because you're actually recovering and getting fed. Yes, I agree 100%. Now, I'm not exactly sure the mechanism behind that. I'm not a scientist. I'm just a coach. But I can tell you right now, that's 100% true. Like, the healthier I eat, the more full I feel. And I can tell you from my own personal experience, like, cleaning my diet up dramatically has made improvements across the board, like health, wellness, fitness, sleep, recovery, everything possible. Now, it took me a little bit of time to get to that point, but once I did, it becomes easier and easier and easier to say no to eating not quite so ideal food choices. Now, like I said, you can have a candy bar and fit it in once in a while. I'm never saying you can't do that, but 
the bulk of your diet needs to be high volume, quality, whole food sources for optimal nutrition, optimal health, and optimal fitness. That's my step one. So your step one is obviously learning how to eat in quality. My step one is learning how to eat in quality. You know, because you can easily go out and buy a processed meal or go to Chipotle and have something like that. But there you're looking at a lot of fat, a lot of oil, a ton of sodium, which a lot of us don't need that much sodium. You know, you're looking at processed ingredients that some will say are okay for you, some will say aren't great for you. I don't really care, I choose not to eat them. So, quantity, quality, and sure. So, I get a lot of questions, people that just are struggling with their diet. Uh, we, we've already figured out what kind of portions uh, should be working for them. They just don't have a good sense of when they should eat them. Uh, so I try to work on their daily structure. Um, and you know, my, the hours that people do it may differ. And I did this for myself so that I would not be hungry throughout the day, especially on days when I'm in a cut. Uh, I'm a weight class athlete, and I generally live about 15, 12 to 15 pounds heavier than my weight class uh, weighs in at. So when I start to really portion out my meals, I like to break it down into five meals a day. And I have a little chart, I'm gonna put it where I'm sitting here so you guys can see it. Is that visible, Scott? Yeah, I'm here in frame two. Okay. So, the basic structure day uh, for me starts around 7 a.m. with breakfast, all right? And it's gonna be 20% of my day's caloric intake. And you'll also see this is this is not a water cut. This is with my 500 milliliters. It's just making sure I'm getting some water during the day. And that water is going to help me fill up as well. Yeah, just like that. This is a one liter Nalgene. You can find these anywhere. Uh, so I'm going to get 20% of my caloric intake at around 7 a.m. I'm going to be a little hungry by 10. So I'm going to take a snack. That snack is going to be 10%. Sounds small, right? But it's really half the size of my breakfast, so it's actually a good size snack. My biggest meal is going to be at lunch. I actually replicated to get at dinner. But you'll notice these tiny 7, 10, 1, 1300, 1600, 1900. These are about three hours apart. So it really does feel like you're constantly eating, you're getting some food into your system, and you're going to stop being hungry. Right? Especially if you are being diligent and getting some water in you at the same time. Um, this is a minimum on the water, not a maximum, right? If you add up all that water throughout the day, you're getting a half a liter at breakfast, a quarter liter with your snack, another half liter at lunch, a quarter liter with your snack, and another half liter with your dinner. That's two and a half liters of water, I think. Two liters of water, all right? And if you ask me what that is, I don't know. The whole talk kilos to me is, is talking in milliliters too, right? What is that in ounces? The good news is on, on these little Nalgene bottles, a thousand milliliters is about 32 ounces. So if you're doing that, that's about 64. And 64 ounces, hey, that's your eight, eight ounce servings of water every day. All right? So that's how we break it down. 20% for breakfast, 10% snack, 30% lunch, 10% snack, 30% dinner, you should be pretty satisfied if you break it down that way, regardless of what your macro intake is. Dude, I love that. I wrote that down for myself. That's a really good idea. I do things a little differently for my own personal use, but I'm actually going to probably start adapting this a little bit more. So I can, so I'm in a cut right now, because I'm an idiot, but I want to cut some weight. And I'm looking for ways to manage my low calorie day, which is today, which is significantly different than my higher calorie day. This will help me a lot. So I can divvy up, all right, maybe I'll eat 540 calories for my breakfast. And then for this, I'll have 275 calories. So stuff like that. I mean, I can think on top of my head and quick math and how it will help me out during the day to manage my food better that way. You know, you're still gonna be a little hungry when you're in a cut. When you're in a cut, for sure. I mean, that's the way it's gonna be. When you're bulking, the idea is to work past that hunger, which is probably more miserable than being hungry. You know, I can tell you how to spirit. I'd rather be hungry. Do you, have, do you have Tim's question? I have everything written up here. He had something about uh, a cut. Yeah, he, Tim Swanson. No, no, the other Tim. Oh, that's him. Yeah. Tim, uh, wait, Barnett. Yeah. No, Tim Barnett. 
gym member asked us, I never actively cut weight. I've cut carbs, fat burners, up the cardio. What's the true blue weight, the true blue way to cut effectively for someone who never cut weight before? So Tim wants to know how to cut weight for, we would assume an athletic endeavor, but he wants to do, do weight lifting. So how would he, what's the true blue way to start off cutting weight? Okay, um, number one, for me, this is what I tell all my strength athletes, especially when they're about to compete, don't cut for your first meet. Just go in there and compete, all right? Don't worry about your weight class. You're gonna weigh what you weigh, you're gonna do what you do. After that, you're gonna get an idea of, hey, do I wanna do this again, okay? So if you decide, <laughs> no, seriously, if you decide that you wanna do it again, then maybe think about, all right, well, I I'm right in between weight classes and I need to make it to this weight class. All right, so again, like I said, I am a weight class athlete and I do have to do cuts every time. I normally plan it out. I set my goal for whatever meet it's gonna be and about 12 weeks out, I get an idea of what my weight is. I'll start cleaning out my diet, all right? I'll start, I'll start drinking less, I like to drink beer. I'll, beer's the easy one to cut out, all right? Take the beer out and then it's anywhere from whatever you like to drink. I like to drink Boulevard Cosmic IPA. Those are about 225 calories per 12 ounce can. Yes, you gotta know these things, right? Take those out. If you're having one a day, two a day, three a day, all of a sudden you're able to eat more food and still get the satisfaction from that or you just remove those calories from your diet completely. Um, two months out, I'm really looking at my weight every morning and every night, seeing what my fluctuations are and how much closer to that goal am I. I generally will lose about four pounds, about a pound a week in that first month out. I'll still have another eight, maybe nine or 10 to go, depending on where I was be before the meet. Um, and then I'm really gonna dial in my carbs. I'm gonna eliminate some of the, the tasty, tasty carbs, those breads, those potatoes and rice, and I'm gonna start filling in a lot more with my broccolis, my asparagus, my spinach. I'm also gonna remove eggs from my diet and replace them with egg whites, okay? The reason for that, even though eggs are delicious, that little extra fat that you get from the yolk, um, you don't actually, I don't actually need. I, I will add vegetables to the egg whites because egg whites taste like shit, okay? I'm not kidding, right? If you eat egg whites, and you think there's no flavor. I used to like put cinnamon in mine. You gotta do something, you gotta do something. So I make extra vegetables the night before, I chop those up, I put them into my egg whites in the morning. That's the only way I can find them satisfactory. Yeah, exactly. One month out, then I'm probably, you know, hopefully four or five pounds away. If I'm within five pounds, my diet's not gonna change at all, okay? I'm gonna do a little bit of a water manipulation the week before the meat, the week of the meat, and I'll, I will be able to cut out that last four or five pounds. If I, if I haven't gotten down to four or five pounds, I'm gonna start cutting out a little bit more. I tend to find that, that if I actually need to lose more weight, my caloric balance, where I start to lose weight, is at 1,600. So 1,600 calories a day for me is about right. And you know, there's a rule of thumb. That's because I'm going to be at 163 pounds at the meet. 1,600 calories. We kind of have this in, in, you know, coaching lore that well, you're going to get about 10 calories per pound of body weight to sustain you or to lose a little bit of weight. And 1,600 is my magic number. It's not fun. I'll tell you that. Uh, but I will get down to that weight and be able to make it at that point. Uh, so to recap, don't cut for your first meet. After your first meet and you want to keep doing it, plan it out about 12 weeks in advance. Get it on the schedule, see where you're at, and then take a few steps each, each month to get there. I agree with that 100%. It's how I approach my nutritional clients as well. You know, I'm not, I'm not sold on water cuts for a couple different reasons. One of them is I think they're too, people can really mess them up very easily. For sure. And you can come in completely dehydrated or completely bloated if you mess it up. Especially if you're a, a, a two hour uh, yeah, two hour way as opposed to a 24. It's a different situation too. I mean, that's the timing of that is impeccable. It really is. So I prefer to bring my people in on weight on point without the extra need to bloat and cut the water. That's the personal preference. Some people are very good at water cuts, some people aren't, some people don't like them, some people love them. So it depends what you're comfortable doing. Scott, what do you think about all that? that uh, I agree completely. Uh, I'm on the other end, I tend to embrace the water cut. 
Hey, it's worked for me in the past, worked for my guys in the past. We've had a couple of missteps historically. Um, but, you know, I think that just comes down to personality, too. I would like to add that, uh, you know, this is talking in regards to cuts in preparations for a meet or competition. Uh, I would draw a distinction between that type of cut and, you know, just maybe more like a lifestyle plan to where maybe it's not quite as aggressive. Uh, one of the best pieces of advice I ever got in regards to cutting and losing weight was just be a little hungry most of the time. And I think there's a tremendous value in that. We, we, yeah. You don't have to absolutely starve, particularly if you're a lifestyle client. But having, you know, again, having a seasoned hand to help guide you, you know, is tremendous. But yeah, just getting comfortable with being a little hungry. I mean, it's like, don't be so soft. We're there's good. studies out there that show the value of a slight caloric restriction diet over long-term longevity. I don't have pop metal, my favorite tips, I'm not that handy. I can tell you right now, if you search PubMed or search internet for longevity plus caloric restriction, you'll find a treasure trove of information you can look up yourself and learn a little bit more about what he's talking about, about the slight, slight comfortability with hunger. I'm not talking like a starter, but we're in America. If you can afford food, you're never really going to starve. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's just a, it's a signal your body is saying, your brain is saying, your body is saying, I'm hungry, please eat. Get through a lot of that hunger pains and you're fine. Okay, next question. It's a cool one here. What food do you always keep stocked in your kitchen and why? I'll start off and then these guys finish. I shop like clockwork. I mean, I eat the same thing every day for the most part. I like extreme structure, I thrive on it. My food list is very basic. Broccoli, peppers, lean ground beef, super lean ground turkey, chicken, spaghetti sauce, cheese, Mixed nuts, uh, pork loin, I use my eggs. Uh, eggs, obviously, gluten-free bagels, Bubby's pickles, which are naturally fermented pickles. You can actually have bacteria in them, they're good for your gut. Not kosher dills or Vlasic, which are soaked in vinegar. Natural fermentation is 10 times better. It tastes amazing. Uh, yogurt, Greek yogurt, and berries, strawberries and blueberries. That's my, I can tell you, this is about my exact work this every single week. Now, obviously, I stock up here and there when I need to, but I know what I'm going to be eating every day for the most part. And I don't get tired of it because it's tasty. And I love salt, and I love pepper, and I love spices, so I spice things up a little bit. You know, my breakfast is a pork hash with peppers, sometimes some salsa, bagel, pickles, meat potatoes, nuts. You know, lunch I'll have either flank steak, I'll get that sometimes, with uh, a turkey and beef burger maybe, with a little bit of cheese on top, meat potatoes, broccoli. Dinner, I'll have another lean meat that I make up, chicken with, with uh, tomato sauce, tomato bait, whatever, spaghetti sauce, some cheese. I air fry it up, it tastes amazing. And I have sweet potatoes and broccoli as well. My snack at nighttime will be my yogurt. Take the yogurt, mix it in the berries, I put it in the freezer during the day. By nighttime, it's frozen up, it's like a bark. It has a lot of volume to it too. When you freeze up a liquid like that, it feels more voluminous, so you feel like you're eating more. So that's, my exact, that's why I do it that way, because it's healthy. It's a variety of fiber. Meat, potatoes, vegetables, and berries, a wide variety of fiber. I keep my meats lean. I like my fat to come from the nuts or the eggs. And I love eggs. I'm not, I can't do egg whites anymore. I ate them for years, and I just I look at one, I want to throw up. So it's got to be the whole egg for me. So I sacrifice by eating leaner meats. You know, I might get my fat from the nuts. Because obviously a nut fat is a little bit better than saturated fat. I don't care what they say in the climate on keto world, the evidence shows that saturated fat in excess is not good for you. I mean, obviously you need to have some, but if you're eating like raw ass steak all day, eventually it catches up to you. It's going to. You know, nut fat is better. I mean, obviously plant fats are not healthy for you. So that's how I, that's how I look at my diet and why I have it in my kitchen. Yeah, same thing. Um... It was, it was Tez that actually asked this question okay. on our, on our uh, Facebook page, and, uh, and I had literally just taken a picture of my shopping cart from Costco, whatever it was, Monday when I went there, and it looks the exact same every time I go. You know, they have the six packs of red, yellow, and orange peppers, broccoli uh, crowns, asparagus, romaine lettuce, 
And then I then I go, well, you know, for me, it's like I can walk into the store, I know exactly where I'm going. You know, Costco, I cut all the way through, go over to the vegetables and fruit section, grab bananas, grab apples, grab oranges, go into the vegetable section, do my loop around, grabbing all my veggies, come out, go right down the meat aisle, you know, grab the chicken breast that they had there in the six packs. And there's two breasts of each one, which are actually really big. Um, sometimes I get the little chicken cutlet ones, but then I grab ground beef, which theirs is 8812. I think it's a little tastier than the 937. So it I is, it is. Exactly it. So I, I don't mind that. Uh, when I'm on a cut, I'm not eating 8812 though. I'll grab some steaks. I'll grab uh, generally uh, ribeye or strip steaks. And I grab flank steaks. Ribeye, yes, they're high in fat. I actually don't eat the fat that's on them. I cut around it. Uh, I know sacrilege, but that's, that's what I do. Um, and then sometimes I'll splurge, you know, and grab one of their shrimp trays, and then I can get out of there, you know. I don't buy a lot of frozen food. Um, sometimes if I need it, I'll grab butter. I like the uh, Kerrygold Irish butter that they have. They have four packs of it. It's amazing. Put down there. They also have milk, eggs, or egg whites, depending on my season. Um, and if I need coffee, I get whole beans, and I'm out of there. I can do my shopping at Costco in... 15 minutes flat, and that's if there's a line of checkout. It's really the same thing when I go to the grocery store as well. The grocery store is set up the best way possible. You only have to go around the perimeter of the store to find everything that you need. Get your vegetables and fruits. If you need some bread, get your bread. Get your uh, your meats, cheeses, dairy, anything else that you like, and then get out of there. Anything on those center aisles is crap. You know, it's the tasty crap, the cookies, the chips, whatever it is, but that's crap that you probably can avoid. Uh, you can probably avoid canned vegetables too. The, the fresh fruits and vegetables are gonna be way better for you anyway. Uh, and then my Jay, my, my dinners and breakfast and lunch all look pretty similar, but if you know how to cook and you know how to use flavor and spice, your food is gonna taste good. And, and I don't mind having the same stuff it's not all the time. I don't eat the same thing every day, but my diet throughout the week is pretty consistent. Yeah, um, I don't have a ton to add to that. I tend to eat pretty clean, uh, paleo-ish plus foods. Um, lots of vegetables. I like to make a half to two-thirds of my plate vegetables. Uh, lean, healthy meats, just like these guys are saying. Um, that's that's really the gist of it. I'll eat potatoes, sweet potatoes. I, as far as foods that I always have, it's like I always have potatoes, I always have sweet potatoes, I always have a variety of colored vegetables. I love zucchini and squash, asparagus, the peppers. I eat a ton of onions, ton of garlic. Um, but yeah, just pretty much just real whole food. Uh, I snack on dates because they're freaking tasty. I love them. It's like eating candy. Um, you know, a little whiskey, a little gin, but generally. You know, paleo-ish plus rice. Uh, when I want rice, I eat rice. Uh, and that's been a really good tool for me. Just stripping out the bullshit food and not eating the uh, the garbage has made it really easy for me to maintain my weight. Historically, I was kind of a fat kid. And um, just cleaning it up has made it where I don't, right now where I am, I'm not laying my food every day. I'm not super, super hard in the logging. I'm able to eat instinctually because of the food choices it's, it's got me to where I'm not getting a bunch of like false hunger signals and whatnot. Awesome. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's really it. Um, and I think that the thing that you guys need to listen to is out of all three of us, we eat <clears throat> plenty of real food. And just as Sean was saying, don't get the bullshit from the middle of the store. We have all to the top of the food chain of the planet Earth eating what the Earth provided for us. That goes pretty far. I think. Yeah, I know it's easy to say, you know, don't put labels on food and don't moralize food. And we don't. We definitely enjoy our junk food here and there. Like I'll eat ice cream once in a while. I'll have pizza sometimes if I feel like it. But it's infrequently. It's not like I'm eating it every day. I'm not going in with every single day McDonald's breakfast. Right. You know, picking my bowels wisely. And that takes time to learn how to do that. You can't go from eating the standard American diet to eating like this overnight. You can't do that. So it's like cut out one thing a day. For me, it took about six months. Yeah, it took a long time. For me, it took a while. It took, I mean, 40 years, honestly. I mean, I, you know, I'm saying it's kind of like anything but experience. It's, it's a long time. Yeah. Okay, we got time for one more question. Could be want to keep this for about half an hour. And I think it's a very relevant one, so the times are right now. A lot of my clients right now work as, in hospitals, 
and they follow nutrition planning as well. And this is a very relevant one for people who work in hospitals. Work in a hospital right now with fairly long shifts, 10 to 12 hours. This is from my remote flight, Yardi. There is a canteen which sent meals, but no fridge to store your own food or my way to heat it up. Any tips how I've made the most of a bad situation and sure getting the right macros in? This is common. It could happen at job sites too, especially construction workers. You know, looking at you, Jared, if you're watching this. So, you need to buy a cooler, obviously. Ice packs in the cooler. Prepare your food maybe in the morning or at night. I mean, pick one or two days a week, prepare your food ahead of time. Make stuff that you can tolerate eating cold. You know, I used to always go to eat turkey and rice cold. You know, cook it up with some chicken broth in it. Make it a little moist and then eat it like that. So even though it's cold, it's not tremendously bad. You know, for vegetables, if you can eat them, if you can steam them up in a steamer and put them in there and eat them cold, by all means do so. You know, fruit can always be cold. This is your best friend. Yes. I use an Arctic one. It's big, it holds a lot, of, it holds a lot. It's much cheaper than a Yeti's. You know, in a situation like that, big three days a week, you can take off days and food prep. You know, maybe cook, cook some chicken in the oven. That way you can heat it up and you can beat it when it's cold. And cold food is nowhere near as tasty as hot food. I understand that. But when it's a will, it's a way. And something like that, that's an unpreventable situation of life when it comes to a job, especially working in a hospital where your shifts are not only long, but chaotic right now. You know, you're worried about a lot, you're stressed out. The one thing you control is how you prep your food, how you store it, and get comfortable down even eating a little cold. So instead of going to the canteen and buying a you know, fatty burger and fries, you know, you have open up your container and you can have like obviously cold chicken, cold vegetables, and cold potatoes. That doesn't sound very appetizing, I know it doesn't. There were some mixed nuts in there too. Of course, some jerky, something like that. But it's a way, a temporary way to ensure that you're getting your proper intake of food in and the proper macros. You can definitely, I would say you can make three meals out of that. I know my wife is also a nurse. She does two hour shifts. Um, but you can, uh, if, you, if you're able to eat your breakfast, you know, if we, if we looked at that little chart that I just pulled up earlier, if you eat your breakfast before you leave the house, right? You might want to change that up to 30% instead of 20%, but then you can definitely have like a Greek yogurt and, and some fresh fruit as your snack. Put together a nice robust salad with some chicken or some steak or something like that for your lunch, and then have another snack for your afternoon before you come home. You can, you can probably put three, I can definitely put three meals into that cooler and hang on to it for the day and not need to microwave anything, right? You wouldn't have to do that at all, especially if you, you know, make it a salad with steak or something like that. You don't need to heat up your steak if you've already cooked it or your chicken or anything like that. Is that boring? Yeah. Is it nutritious? Yeah. Is it gonna get you through the day? Absolutely, and you're not gonna have to go down to the cantina that might suck. The yeah, only thing I've got to add to that is, uh, you can make time for it. it. It's not that bad. You're looking at, you know, you can prep an entire day for what, 15 minutes? Yeah, I prep my food every day, yeah. but I'm also a little different or my hours are not quite the same as a 12 hour shift. So, but it, it's important. Yeah, if it, yeah, if it's, you can make time for it. The excuse I don't have time is bullshit. Well, it depends, it depends on the context. Like, if you, I mean, if you have a family to take care of, it's tough to make time. You just have to find that time during the week, but then you have off. Yeah. Yeah. The day you have off, time. yeah. The day you have off, make, make a bunch of meals ahead of time, throw them in the fridge, you're good to go. Yeah. Every single day prep, I'm a lot. I have a luxury to be able to do that because of my hours here. And now since we're shut down until the end of April, <laughs> I can even do even more. But yeah. and prep doesn't have to be a special thing. I tend to make extra food at night, and that food's nutritious, and that's my lunch the next day. Right. Typically. I mean, you don't have to think of prep as a whole separate process from your day to day. Right. I mean, it's all about how you like you said, make extra food at night. Yeah. You know, make extra food at lunch at a time. Have a day you put aside. It's it's all relative to the time that you have. It's just about finding out what time you can do it, and then getting a cooler, getting ice packs, and eating a cold. Which eating a cold is hard, but I I've done it, yeah. and it's something that I have to live with. Yeah. Cool. You good? I feel pretty good, guys. This is the first episode, so we're gonna have some growing pains along the way. And we're gonna keep them all within a half an hour or short for the most part. Episode two will be next week, and we will figure out a topic as we go. So let's be uploaded through our YouTube channel permanently, and we got more stuff coming along on the website. We're working a membership page for the website for people who aren't living in Kansas City, who aren't gym members. 
We'll have access to our programming that we write for PDFs down the line, access to our private coaching chats. Like all three of us are gonna get together with some videos and we're gonna have like 10, 15 minute coach chats. Mm -hmm. We'll have a Q and A section in that group. Where we're gonna talk about how you ask questions about the video, we'll answer them. So it'll be an educational portal for people to help program the workouts, talk about nutrition, and maybe a little bit of life coaching in there. Maybe, probably not that much of that. But have a great week, be safe, and wash your hands. Talk kilos to me. Dad, 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 dad.